what's up what's good what's going on family so let's jump straight in and do an energy check-in for the sign of sagittarius straight at the deck we got kodesha <clears throat> sexual healing or sexual wisdom and um then we also have Lilith. So there's definitely a need. There's definitely this energy. Because you know your Lilith energy. That is that sexual. <sighs> facing your shadow. Uh, your desires. Your hidden desires. Is your Lilith energy. Um, ooh. I said your hidden desires. And look what's, look what's behind it. No more hiding. Oh my goodness. And it's and, and because of this, okay, so it's like one of your hidden desires. So there's a strong okay, so there's something to do with your Lilith that you're facing head on. You know it's you can't hide from it anymore. You have to face this energy. But it's like it's time to take action on it. Um, it's time to heal this because when sexual wisdom came out, I said sexual healing. So there it is time to heal your of fear or your discontent or the shadow it's time to heal the thing that makes you feel like you have to cover this hidden desire up it's time to take action on it because this is of like there's a this is like at the precipice of a uh of a past like past like karma cycle that is clearing like you're clearing it out but it's like in order to complete the mission, you got to come. Something's got to something. A hidden desire has to come to the forefront. Wow. So let's see where this. Okay. Let's see where this takes us. Ooh. right now you're being told like in the conscious part, you're being told to rest. And what I'm feeling when I'm hearing rest one, I will say this. I do feel like that there is a need for someone to take a break from any sexual actions. You know what I'm saying? There is a need to reevaluate what sexual intercourse is for you what do you equate it to like once you give your sexual body away what is it that you expect in return from it what is that an unspoken contract for because there is someone needs to rest from giving that out until there's clarity on what it is that you're giving out okay um yeah, because you're not, I'm telling you, someone is needing to rest from sexual energy. I don't know. Um, but we have light your fire. I don't think you realize just how much power you're giving away just through your sexual intercourse. Okay, that makes sense. Sacred marriage. We're definitely talking about a sexual relationship here, guys. Let's see where this is going. Oof. King Neptune, maybe go watch um, Fridays. I'll try my best to link it right up here. Let me put 305 down. 305 could be significant, but I'm going to link Friday's daily increase right up here at 305 so you guys can see it. Um, it may be some significance. That's literally where I just put the deck to. Yeah, there's definitely something to do with sacred contracts going on here. Divine messages are coming through for you. Okay, where are we going from here? Okay. Give me just one second, guys. All right, guys, so let's see what's going on. I definitely feel like that this is you becoming more comfortable with your sexuality and really understanding like but not just becoming more comfortable with your sexuality but becoming more comfortable with your sexual desires and and begin and understanding what it means to you and being comfortable in what it means to you. I do feel like that this is I, I don't know. I feel like that this is a. I feel like that this is a bigger message, Sag. I'm not gonna lie, but let's just move forward. There's something big about this message that it feels. But let's see. Why is Kodesha here? What message can we expect from Kodesha? Kodesh, not Kodesha. Kodesh. Pegasus, break free, dear one. Spread wide and far, for you aren't containable. You are limitless. There is a hidden desire that you're. There's a desire that you're keeping it caged up, 
and it's telling you to break free and really spread your wings. And it is in a it's a, and it is in a sense of how you um how you express your desires in partnerships. Because this is a three, and that's all about um, uh, activations, collaborations, and, st and uh, just coming together, teamwork, energy. So I definitely feel like that this is about expressing your true hidden desires inside of partnerships. Phoenix, yes, there's something about your fire. 31, progression, summon, summons, your f flesh rises from the ashes and into the expansive flames of your soul. Something in your soul is calling to be expressed right now, Sagittarius. Did I go through that? This is for Sag, Sun, Moon, Rising, North Node, Venus, as well as Ninth House. Very particular messages here for the Ninth House. Okay, guys. I don't know why I felt the need to say that again. But if y'all still rock here with me, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Um, yes, and then 33 is at the bottom of the deck. For it says ribbons, for it lives in the silks of my bindings, the knot in my truth, the eyes of becoming the witness swallowed in stillness. There's definitely something about exp like your truth. It, you're, you're holding back your truth in one way or another. And I definitely feel like that it is in how you express your love. Why is Sagittarius what I tell you love spell? Why is Sagittarius in this energy of holding back the way that you're expressing your love? That's interesting. We have primal. Oh, Sagittarius. What I'm getting, and this is 32. This is what is fucking missing, yo. Here's what I'm telling you, whoever's watching this reading, I love y'all so much. I'm so glad that we are connecting is what I want to say. But what I am getting here is there is a portion of love that you're not allowing yourself to experience. And so you're trying to control the, the pathway in which love is playing out to avoid a certain portion of the journey of love. And this here is saying there is no other way around it, around, but through the very truth that lives within you. So you must, there is definitely something about looking, facing your shadow. And there's, like, there's no way around it. You can't put on this fake spiritual energy. You can't put on this fake healing energy. If there's an area of your life that you're not willing to truly look at. And I feel like that it's how you show up in romantic relationships. This is interesting, Sagittarius. Let's move forward. Perseverance. I know that I can do whatever I set my mind to. There's something about this that fucking scares you. And so you procrastinate. You know it though. You know exactly what I... It says now is the time to jump on a go instead of putting it out. Taking action will attract success. All right, Spirit, where are we going? All right, uh, I have another card in here. Self-control. All right, Spirit, where are we going here for my Sagittarius Collective? Let the honey of your soul swell in the depths of love. You're trying to keep your ooey gooey inside protected. Like you're trying, there's an ooey gooey part of you that you're trying to, um, like it's like, it's, there's a detour. Anytime that, that honey gooey spot gets close to it, there's an automatic detour. And it's saying, it's like no more detours here, Sagittarius. The only way to get what it is that you're really looking for, this hidden desire, the only thing that you're truly going to, the only way that you're truly going to get what it is that you truly desire is if you, you allow your truth. Like you must, you must wear your truth is what is going to clothe you. 
there's something about time for a nap. Um, imagine in deep knowing. Ooh, I'm telling you, you know, you do, you do know what it is I'm talking about. But there's a per, there's there is a need to shift one's perspective, perception. How is it that you're seeing this? It's like. Mm -hmm. Flexibility is needed. Okay, so now I'm curious about the moon cycle because I have two moons here that are crescent this way. And then I have the full moon. So I feel like that in this resting period, there's something that happens and your grip is loosened on what it is that is manifest. And so it's like when the new moon Give me a second. Okay, so this right here is called the waxing crescent moon is what I'm looking at right now. So I feel like that and the waxing crescent moon is all about set, is setting intentions, right? That's when you set your intentions. But there's something about the way that your perception shifts when by the time we get to the full moon. So it says um, a time to harvest the intentions and wishes from the past moons. So I feel like that when it's time to actually harvest you, what the intentions that you've set, there's something that has played out between the first quarter moon and the waxing gibbous moon that causes your perception to not trust what you know is coming in what you called in during a moment of rest it's like you allow it to slip through your fingers and the first quarter of moon is all about taking action so that you're second guessing the action steps that you're taking and if i'm not mistaken we did we seen the divine masculine and i said something about taking action so there's definitely something about the way that you're met you're setting your intention and then when it's time to take action your 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 confidence in your intentions it slips away and so it says when you face obstacles do not waver it's a time for pushing forward wow and then the waxing gibbous moon it says observe and align your hopes with the universe with the universe momentum is building so as momentum is building instead of building the momentum of what you truly know internally it's like fear is what's building its momentum Wow. And so it keeps a desire from it keeps a desire from really becoming its full potential. My God, Sagittarius, what have we tapped into? There's definitely a need for some self-control here. Yeah, let's go here. You know, Sag, I'm, I'm taking this as a message for me as I'm delivering the message to the collective, but I also feel like that there's a significance for you. I just heard, don't try to connect it just to deliver the message. So I feel like that there's a portion that you're overthinking because you're trying to connect over everything. And so because of that, you're losing sight of the intention because you're connecting things along the way. And that is altering your intention. OK, so stop trying to connect things and just deliver the messages and move forward, deliver the messages and move forward, deliver the messages and move forward. And eventually everything will culminate. So we have the Knight of Swords. I definitely feel like that you're rushing at something out of fear. And it's time to, and, and because like you're rushing at something and then you're finding yourself in the in in the sense of darkness and it's awakening. It's triggering a lot of the a lot of your hidden fears, a lot of your anxieties and and, and they're coming to light. And so now it's time to take a nap. And really address what is what are your deepest fears? What are your hidden desires? What is the unknown? It's time to dive into the eighth house of you. What is in your eighth house? It's time to dive in and do some investigation. The eighth house is all about um, sex, death, 
and rebirth, transformation, deeply felt peak experiences, depth in, intera uh, depth interaction with others, growth and change. Um, it's definitely uh, a time to become really curious and and analytical but not to the point of analytical analytical paralysis but it's time to get to know the unknowns it is time to get to see what is lurking behind like it's you can't be scared of the dark anymore it's time to face your shadow it's time to go look it's time to go get that flashlight and it's time to go shine a little light on this little shadow and get to know it because it's causing you to go at situations completely confident. I mean, let me read you my key words for the Knight of Swords. Bravery, accomplishments, tenacity, big changes, seizing the moment, opportun uh, um, opportunated, <laughs> opportunistic, um, direct, impatient, focused, daring, ambitious, perfectionist. Right, but then you get into these situations and you you go you get you take on that energy and then you get it and you like oh my gosh no, then I start to feel like it's like that inner child. It's like I begin to just shrink back down into that inner child that was made to seem like absolutely um, your um, what are they uh, a friend just. I guess that's what you call them. Uh, socially awkward. And then, you know, this socially awkward, you begins to just shine out. And then it begins to, they begin to, it just, it, it just makes the situation worse. It's time to stop rushing into situations without knowing yourself. Period. It is definitely time to face your fears. You got to look them on. You got to look them dead head on the seven of wands the ten of swords the king yeah the king of wands i do i feel like that there's like there's a you're having a hard time believing that the worst is over and and the fact in having a hard time believing that the worst is over is the very same thing that keeps the worst from being over. So if you just take a risk, take a chance and say, the worst is over, you know, the worst is over. I've made it through the worst. Then the good shit can, the, the, the shadow can begin to lift. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's no, you're no longer seeing yourself in this little, you know, the child of the situation. And you're beginning to view yourself as, as the person that you have become. And therefore, you're able to see the significance and the importance of your vision. And therefore, you're not allowing outside influences to sway your vision. Outside influences to sway your vision. Because that it is the outside influence that is causing you to shrink down your vision and causing you to lose grasp of what it is that you've set out the intention to create. <clears throat> so there's a need to protect yourself be more responsible with yourself and how you let the outside world affect you because I do feel like that there that is what is causing this big beautiful desire inside of you that is hidden but you're not allowed to but you're not allowing yourself to express it you're keeping it hidden you're keeping it in a cave I feel like that you're protecting your knowledge. You're protecting your knowledge. You know, I'm going to say this, Sag. It's, this is probably going to be a longer reading. I'm sorry. But if y'all still rocking with me, get the thumbs up. Um, sorry, not sorry, to be honest. Um, but anyways, I was breaking down a situation. And it really is... Our environment that creates us. 
But it is not our environment that gets the award or the acknowledgement for the life that we live. That is us and only us. We make those decisions, right? And some environments teach us that, of course, emotional intelligence is absolutely a must. And I'm not going to sit here on this channel and act like your girl's a pro at it because I'm not. I am such an emotional person. It is unreal. And that's probably why I'm so good. Well, I'm not trying to toot my horn. I am. It is why the good Lord is able to use me the way that the good Lord is able to use me. It's because of my emotions. So your girl, as far as emotional intelligence, the good Lord is still working on me. I have my work in progress. But some people in their environments teach them that their emotions, what you crying for? Shit, the world, you know what I'm saying? And so they don't cater to the emotions, right? So then these people... People that come from that environment close off their emotions and they don't realize how much, how hard their life, like, like life can be hard on different levels, right? But that lifestyle becomes hard because we all need that nurturing, tender love, right? And it, and, and those, in people that come from that lifestyle, typically they, Take a little love. They, they categorize where that nurturing love has a place for it. And they place it in that category and they don't value it. So then people that are emotional and that do know the value of emotions and love, they it's like, you're not going to put baby in a corner. Nobody puts baby in a corner. You know what I'm saying? And so once someone that comes from that hard made environment and they get their hands on someone who has come from an environment that values emotions, then they they feel restricted. And then they feel like they're, so there's a there's a there's a disconnect there. Right. So then you have to say. You are still continuing to perpetuate a cycle from your environment that is not conducive to your well-being at the risk and that is bleeding onto other people, right? The sensitive person can take offense to that. Nine times out of ten, they cry a couple tears. But then it's like, but I still know my worth, right? Sometimes we get ourselves tied up. The truth. Um, the not in my truth because of my because of that truth the sensitive person begins to tie their truth up a little bit so that that corner or that category doesn't feel so much like a corner but it it becomes to well I'm just being understanding to the way that this person is I hope that I'm making sense and I'm not losing you all but I feel like that there's some significance there you can't I understand the soul of the person. I understand the soul of a person. But you can't change how the environment create um molded that soul, right? You can't change that. Especially if the soul has not awakened to the uncomfortable the to the, has not awakened to truly how uncomfortable that environment is because they've spent so much time convincing themselves that that is their comfort that is their protection right so i don't know moving forward you got to stop allowing that to to alter and change your vision bottom line because your wish fulfillment is really trying to come in for you and you know that because that's what you set your intention in as when you're going out you're just allowing that category category that someone that means something to you has placed you in um you're allowing that category to shield you from the from what you know is really coming in because you're sacrificing and restricting your growth let me move forward i feel like i'm rambling We have the Hangman, the Hierophant, the Three of Swords, and the Queen of Cups. 
there's a deep lesson here. There are deep lessons inside of these heartbreaks. There are. But you must first be willing to surrender, like, Pain has a temporary purpose. Period. The pain is temporary. But it has a purpose. The pain is intended to be temporary. But the purpose that it carries is far greater. But a lot of times... Because we've spent so much time restricting our self to fit a category. That that pain inside of that category. It feels exponential. And it feels like that pain is outweighing the purpose. But it really is about, it's, it's just time to get to a point where it's like, no matter how great I view this pain, I must surrender and I got to feel it. I got to feel it in order to achieve the lesson, in order to learn the lesson. So I have to surrender to the feeling of his pain. And I have to know as I'm surrendering to this pain. That this pain is temporary and it really does not amount to the real purpose. I got to feel the pain to find the purpose because the purpose is far greater. You got to feel the pain without releasing the lesson. You have to feel the pain without releasing the lesson. You got to go through something Sagittarius. There's something you're not trying to go through. No matter how many times you break up with, no matter how many relationships you go through, there's still something that you're trying to avoid experiencing and you're going to have to experience it in order to acquire the lesson. So don't get lost in the pain to the point that you're not able to retrieve the, the, the hidden knowledge. Because the pain of being cracked open, there's something how to know a wise lesson. There's some wisdom inside of you that's cloaked in pain, that's cloaked in a deep wound. And it is going to hurt as the universe is breaking it open. It is going to hurt. The spirit is asking you to trust in the universe, trust in your creator, knowing that there is something far greater coming in. Because of the intention that you set in a, in a time of rest. You can't keep running from this. But what you can do is know that once you start, you can make it through it. Because you know that whatever you set your mind to, you can achieve it. It just requires self-control. Let's change the definition of bad bitch energy. Bad bitch ain't what you look like. Bad bitch is what you're willing to face. On through the inside. I'm a bad bitch because I can look at my image in this reflection. That's bad bitch energy. I can look at myself in this mirror. I can look at the knot of my truth. And I can untangle it. And I can figure out how to make use of it. I can become the eyes of becoming. I am becoming my truth. This is somebody is in the journey of becoming their truth. Something that they have hidden for far too long. Based off of something that you acquired. And, uh, based off of some mindset that you acquired in, in your lifestyle that, that told you it was okay to restrict your vision for the acceptance of others. It's over. That time is over. And I'm not going to lie to you, Sagittarius. It's going to be painful as you're breaking out of that. It's going to be painful as you're breaking out of that.
there is a need to protect to protect your vision. A motherfucker will tell you that your idea, your vision ain't shit. Just to go and turn around and do it thyself. Remember that, Sag. Eternity. Deeper union with you. Change me, divine beloved, into one who understands the true meaning of death. Remove my fear of dying. Open my vision to the eternal. May all transitions lead me into ever deepening unions with you. So there's definitely a deep transformation that has taken place. And you're afraid of the things that are coming to an end. You're afraid of what is what must die in your life. Therefore, you restrict your vision so that nothing must die, so that nothing must go away. Some things must go away because they are only there to enlighten you to a portion of your vision that you haven't been seeing. And then they must go. Balance. My needs will be met. Change me, divine beloved, into one who can fully offer my schedule to you. So my life can be in balance. Let me take rest whenever necessary. Trusting that one way or another, all needs will be met. So what this is telling me that in those moments through that first quarter moon, up until that full moon, when you begin, when you face obstacles and you begin to waver, it is time to go back to the place of rest where you was at when you were setting the intention. To do some, to, to, to get the proper reflection. Because as the moon has shifted, the illusion, don't forget that the moon cast illusions. So as the moon shifts, the reflection wavers. The reflection moves. It doesn't mean that the intention has wavered. It just means that what's being reflected is, 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 is shifting. But you can't get lost in that illusion. So take yourself back to that place of rest. Discernment. God, I love it. Trusting your plan. Y'all know I love when a plan wraps to God. Or when a reading comes to God. <laughs> <laughs> it says trust in your plan grant me discernment and detachment when they when they're needed most may i honor my feelings deeply then fully let go trusting your plan i love it sagittarius this is a beautiful place to leave this reading i absolutely love you and i hope that you were able to find the guidance that you were seeking and in all that we say and in all that we do moving forward guys let's choose peace love and light guys